So I want to show you how we can take an outline of an object, in this case a bottle, in Illustrator and render it using the basic 3D rendering uh, concept here under the effect menu. And what I've done is I've created just a basic outline of half a bottle and half a cap and these are separate items because I'd like the cap to be red so I have a red stroke here and they're not filled with anything and then the bottle I want to have blue. And I'm going to create half a bottle and half a cap and I'm going to draw a line straight down through here and I'm going to make sure that those all end at the same point, which I have done, because I want to make sure that this renders correctly and doesn't leave any holes. So when I create this path here, these two paths, um, if I want something a different color, I will have to make that a totally separate path that's not attached to the existing path. I'm going to select both paths and I can render them all at the same time. Go under the Effect menu, 3D, and I want to revolve these around an axis here. The default axis is from the left edge and it creates just cylinders here. I want to change that to the right edge. The reason why, because when I create something I go to the left because I'm left-handed. So this is going to give me a revolve and it literally revolves everything around 360 degrees. What's interesting with the revolve here, if you change the angle, you can see that you can actually create sections of this, like create little sections. And if you come all the way around 360 degrees, this will actually go in and give you a full on 360 degree revolve of your basic half shape. So with that, click OK, and there is my basic shape. There was a little message in there said it was having a little bit of trouble rendering um, one of the edges right here. And you can see that gray area, it just for some reason, it had trouble rendering it. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go into outline mode. So go under uh, the view menu, go under outline, and you can see my objects are totally separate and they're just outlines. So go back under view and preview. I'm going to select this edge here and I'm going to just move this down. I'm just using my arrow keys to move this down so it makes it look like the cap is actually on the bottle. Now I'm going to select the bottle. I'm going to go into my appearance panel and I would like to map some artwork to this bottle. But in order to be able to map artwork to a bottle, there is a very specific mode that we have to be in in order for this to work. So here I've created this Illustrator file and I'm going to select this entire Illustrator file. I'm going to come in and I'm going to paste it into my existing Illustrator file here. I can scale it down if necessary, don't have to, but I'm going to put it in here for now. And then what I need to do is I need to turn this into a symbol. And a symbol is the only method I can have to take a graphic and map it onto a surface. So you want to open up your symbols panel, which is under the window menu, right there. And once you get all of your artwork selected, you can group it together if you want to, don't have to. But then I'm going to select and drag this into my symbols panel. And I'm going to give it a name. And it is not a movie clip, it is a graphic. And I'm going to click OK. Now, I don't need this symbol on my desktop anymore. And it's now there in my symbols panel. I'm going to select my 3D render, go into my appearance panel, and I need to call back up that 3D revolve dialog box that I initially got to. So I go to my appearance panel with my object selected, click on the 3D revolve. It's going to launch my 3D revolve options and I want to go down to Map Art. Now I have to find the surface that I want to map this symbol to, and there's 21 surfaces on this bottle, on the inside and the outside. So as I go through and I'm finding the surfaces here, you're going to see this red outline is going to show you what I'm mapping to. And you do have to be careful when you look at this because you have to kind of pay attention to where, whether you're on the inside or the outside of the bottle. Once you find the surface by going through here and seeing the red webbing here and also seeing the actual display surface here, the light gray is the area that you can see, the dark gray is the area that's hidden from you because it's behind the object. Once I get to the surface that I would like to map my symbol to, I go to that surface and I choose the symbol that I've already created in here and it's going to drop it right in. 
and I put this in here and I see that it's not showing up on my surface right here and the reason why is that I have the wrong surface. This is actually the surface on the inside. So I'm going to clear this off the surface here and I'm going to go through my surface here to find out the surface that is actually on the outside. So I come through here and I look and I'm going to get the surface on the outside and this looks like it's now the surface on the outside and I'm going to then apply my symbol to the surface on the outside here and take a look and see how that looks. And it's not coming up, which means I still don't have the right surface. And it's, it is kind of tricky to find out which surface I'm getting to in order to be able to map it. Ah, this is my surface right here. Okay. And it's hard to tell because it's as you go through the surfaces, you think, oh, I have that surface, and you may not. Okay. If you put it in your symbol in here and it doesn't show up on your object, you know you don't have the right surface. Your artwork shows up. Anything in the gray area is where the artwork is going to show. Anything in the dark gray area, it won't show. I'm going to scale this by holding down my shift key. And I'm going to move my symbol, which is my label here. I'm going to park it in the area that I'd like it to see. And I can move it up and down as you go. And now my label is on my object right there. And I think that's a good position for the label. Move it around, scale it, tuck it around the back right there, however you want to do that. Make it so you like the fit, the scale, and I'm going to click OK. I'm done mapping my artwork, so I click OK. And I come back in, and I can zoom in and zoom out and see my entire object. Now, if I select my shapes here, you'll notice that I can no longer get into my appearance panel and edit these things separately. And the reason why is because I had this selected and the bottle selected first, but now that I've mapped artwork to it, I can no longer go in and control the angles of these separately. So you definitely want to get your angle, your size, and all your other attributes done first before you go in and map the artwork. Once you get the artwork mapped, then you've got this content here, and you can see that it's right there, mapped to the surface. If you want to change that, select the bottle, go to your mapped artwork, click on that, go back to the map art, and you will have to go back and you have to find that surface, which was number 17, and then you can change, edit, transform, rotate, whatever you want to do here to get that label into the position that you want. Click OK, and then click OK again. There's the bottle. Now, there's my complete rendering of the object. Now, this is all done in Illustrator. If I then wanted to take this into Photoshop, I could go in and I could save this bottle. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to save this bottle and save it in Illustrator. I could then go into Photoshop, go under File, open a Smart Object, and then navigate to where that Illustrator file is opening this as a smart object so it's totally protected and if I decide that I would like to go back and do further editing to the Illustrator file I always can. It hasn't been rasterized into a pixel based layer. So now that it's a smart object I'm going to go under Invis, uh, image canvas size and I'm going to increase the size of my canvas here so I have a little bit more working room. Click OK so my canvas is a little bit larger. Now if I'd like to go in and I would like to apply highlights and shadows to this, more so than is already in here, I can very easily go in, create a new layer, and based on the colors that I sample from here, I could create highlights and shadow layers in here by taking my image, grabbing a lighter color here. And if I'd like to add more highlights, I can create a new highlight layer, grab my brush tool, and paint with whatever size brush I would like for a highlight. Say I would like to add more of a highlight here on the front. I could paint with a highlight coming down. And in order to make sure that doesn't go beyond the edge of my image, I'm going to Option or Alt click, clip it to it. I can adjust the opacity of this as well. Set the mode to screen if I want. And then of course I can always go in and I can transform this can paint in, paint out, and I can create other highlights on my rendered bottle. You can do the same thing with a shadow layer as well. Create a new layer. Option or Alt click in between those two, so it's clipping to the bottle. I can sample a much darker color. Go into my color picker 
and choose a much darker version for my shadow. Grab my brush, paint anything that I want to in terms of the shadow, and because it's clipped to the side there, it doesn't go beyond. Set that shadow to multiply and control the opacity here so I can control the rendering of my bottle really quickly. That's just a really quick way to be able to go back in and change or create a render, put a label on it as a symbol, and then go in and edit this in Photoshop. Now, if I'd like to change my bottle, I can go back to my smart object, double click on it, open this back up in Illustrator, select my object here, and maybe I want to change the bottle from green to, say, orange. So I select my bottle and I change whatever color I want, you know, there it is, change it to whatever color bottle because it's a smart object, great. Okay, and I'm going to close this and save it. I'm going to switch back over to Photoshop and it's going to update that change right there because it was a smart object. And that's just a really quick way to go in and render and revolve a three-dimensional um, path apply a label as a symbol, open it up in Photoshop, and apply some highlights and shadows.